All right, let's do something different and set up a innkeeper because why not? And it'll be a great way to go over interact interface that has an input and an output. So let's go create the innkeeper first. I'm gonna put it in the shopkeeper area. So right click blueprint class of an actor. This will be the innkeeper underscore BP. Double click and open that up and we're gonna add a skeletal mesh. That'll be the innkeeper. And for now I'm just gonna use the peasant mesh. Whoa, yeah him. That'll be fine. So I'm gonna add a tag real quick while I'm thinking about it of the interact functionality. And then a class settings, we're going to add our blueprint ugh, Blueprint interface. So I'll add the interact interface. So I am going to add a variable that will be the cost to stay. Don't need none of this. Compile and let's set up our new interact thing. So I'm going to add a new function called check gold. Now this one will have an input and an output. So the input will be amount to check for basically, and it'll be an integer. And then the output will be just a return or I'm going to call it has enough and it will be a boolean compile that and then now if we go in here to our player blueprint under the interfaces tab you'll see how all of these are gold but this one is not it's grayed out and you can't well you can drag it out but you can't do an event check gold like the other one you can do event fire pit this one is its own function so we can just it's basically already a function we can just double click and open it up so what we want to check for is the amount to check against how much gold we have so let's get our gold and we want to see if our gold is greater than or equal to how much we have and then we'll return whether that's true or false. And that's all that takes. So now in the innkeeper, we can set a cost. Let's say for now it's going to be 125. We'll make it to where this can be changeable. So on event interact, we want to get player character. We're not going to cast to it, but we are going to send that check gold message. And we'll feed in that cost. And then right at the end, we'll add a branch. And if they have enough, we'll do something. And if they don't, we'll just print a string that says, you're broke. I hate when that happens when I'm typing stuff and that thing pops over it. You're broke. I know I am, but you don't have to tell me. All right, so I'm going to take away this character's gold real quick. So the gold graph is not editable. What do you mean you're not editable? I'm just going to set it to 100 so it's like you're almost there. I'm going to set the innkeeper out here. It's, oh he has no, okay. So inside the innkeeper I got to set him uh, some collision. And he is just going to block everything. All right. Except for apparently that. Event interact checking gold. Don't have an, how much does it cost? 125. And I only have 100, so it should be doing it, but it must not be 
hitting appropriately. So I'm going to change this collision preset to block all dynamic. Yeah, there it goes. So if block all doesn't work for some reason, then block all dynamic will. You broke, I know. But let's say you do have enough. So let's let's set up another function. Let's do another in our blueprint interface. And it'll be called recover player. It doesn't really need any inputs or outputs because we'll do everything inside the player blueprint. But if we have enough gold, then we can take this get player character and do recover player. Just like that. Hmm. What we'll also do is we'll add a boolean that says in use, basically. And then we'll add a branch at the beginning to make sure that we're not currently trying to use the innkeeper. So, is it in use? No? Then alright, let's do this. And after we recover the player, we'll set this to true. And then we'll set a delay for about I don't know, 10 seconds, should be enough. And then we'll set in use back to false so that we can recover again if we need to. But now what we want to do is over in our player blueprint, in our event graph, get rid of that. I should have updated the gold while I was thinking about it, but we'll do an event recover player. And we're going to do this out here, but somewhere fairly clean, because the reason is I'm going to show you how to do some camera fading and stuff like that. So when we recover the player, it's like traditional old school games where uh, you the screen fades out and then you heal and then blah, blah, blah. So when we recover the player, let's get player camera manager. This is where you can do a bunch of... Uh, camera stuff and the one thing I want to do is start camera fade now the from alpha to alpha gets kind of confusing sometimes but basically this is what alpha when it fades it's basically putting an image over the screen so at zero alpha there's no image over the screen and you can see what's going on Two alpha is what you want it to go to so we want it to go from the zero that it's sitting at to the one and the duration will be, we'll say, two seconds. Here you can actually pick a color that you want. So if you wanted it to fade white or red or black, whatever you want it to do, I'm going to do that. And then we will click hold when finished. Otherwise, as soon as it's done, it's just going to snap back to nothing. Then we got to add a delay after it for the duration of it, because otherwise everything else happens at the same time. So after we are after we fade the screen out, we'll call our restore health function and our restore mana function, and then whatever other restoration functions you have to restore health amount. Just gonna get my max health. Restore mana, same thing, max mana. And then I'm going to add another short delay just to make sure that happens. And then I will get my player camera manager again. And then start camera fade again. And then this time we're going to go from the 1 to 0 over the same amount of time. So 2 seconds. And should hold when finished. So this is a pretty, just a basic innkeeper setup. Uh, I'm gonna set his price down since I forgot to do it to the character just to make sure we can actually do this. So let's jump in. And it fades out and it fades back in. Um, let me let me set up that pain function one more time from So apply damage. 
myself. Just to show you that when it fades out, heals, fades back in. So what you can also do is right here is our main canvas panel that has everything inside of it. We can name this main panel and make it a variable. So inside the graph here, we can create a custom event called fade HUD. So we can actually create an animation down here. Animation fade HUD. Oh, fading HUD. That'll work create the track and it's for our main panel so we will set its render opacity I want this to go over the about 1.5 seconds so at 1 it's there and then at the 1.5 second mark it's at 0 and we'll create that but we can actually let's just keep this going and we'll just do it all in one Now it's we'll played in reverse. That'll be easier. So in the fade HUD, we will get our fading HUD animation and play it. Play animation, and then we can create another custom event called unfade HUD. Play that same animation. Except for this time, in play mode, we'll set it to reverse. So now over here, when we start the camera fade, we want to do it before the delay. We'll get our HUD reference and call the fade HUD function, just like that. Then over here at the end, when we're starting the camera fade back out, we can get our HUD ref one more time and unfade HUD. <clears throat> then it fades out nicely and then fades back in. So since we want the innkeeper to actually cost money, let's go back into our Interact Blueprint interface and we'll add one more called Spend Gold. And it will take an input of an amount spent. And that will be an integer. That way we can feed in how much we want to tell our player to they've just spent. So just like we're doing the recover player here, before this delay we will also call that spend gold message. And then we'll move this out of the way a little bit drop this in right here and then we'll feed in the cost just like that okie doke and then inside our player blueprint I'll get rid of that I don't need that now we'll do an event spend gold and then I think we have spend money function do we not remove item change hmm okay well we'll just get our gold subtract that amount from it and then set gold just like that that'll be fine that'll work so now jumping in I have a hundred dollars up there underneath my health bar now I have 25 so it's working so yeah simple uh, innkeeper type thing you can set up a widget for it if you wanted to to where you press a button that 
tends to be how people do it. Pops up. Would you like to spend the night and tells you the price? Uh, I'll let y'all do that part, or I can do a part two to this if you really want to see that. Um, but we'll, uh, if not, we'll start going over some other stuff. So I'll see y'all soon. Bye.